All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to Genius Tennis. And in this video, we're gonna do another live lesson demonstrating the PTR structure, open, close, open structure of a lesson. Now today I've got my student here, Matt. Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about your playing experience? Uh, I used to play football uh, in high school and uh, college, but I started picking up tennis uh, late in life. So I don't know, four, four or five years. Yeah, I'm actually pretty surprised at his progress for somebody who didn't actually start at a super early age. So today we're going to look at all of his strokes. We're going to see if there's anything we need to fix. My goal is to get Matt winning more matches, more tournaments. Ain't that right? Yes, and my goal is to have a 9 UTR, which is high. Outstanding. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before we get started, I'm just going to have you warm up. Obviously, you're in very good shape, but, you know, we still got to get the blood pumping. So go ahead and give me just one lap. Go ahead. And make sure don't cut any corners. Not no. Start over. Start over. Come back. Come back. Oh my. God. <laughs> All right. Go around. Go around. Then when you get to the halfway point, speed up just a little bit. Three, two, one. Now, a little bit faster. There we go. Nice strides, man. All right. Good. All right, so tennis movement is extremely lateral. So the first agility drill that we're gonna do is galloping down and back. So galloping down to this doubles line and all the way back. Let's do it together. Ready? Three, two, one, go. And stay as low as you can. You want the gallops to be as horizontal as possible. So you don't wanna be jumping high in the air. Yeah, he's pretty fast. Very nice. So next, we're gonna do karaoke, okay? so. How we're gonna do this is left foot across in front, right foot behind, then left foot across behind, right foot in front, okay? So in front, out, behind, out, in front, out, behind, out. Easy? All right, go ahead, without me. Yes, less off the ground, okay? Nice. All right, good. Next thing we're gonna do to stretch out these hamstrings are Frankenstein. So you're gonna throw your leg up and then take a couple steps, go forwards, just like that. Really throws out the entire leg, go ahead. I know you in particular, you said you get super stiff, right? Yeah. You feel this? You feel oh, yeah. like the, the electric sting? Yeah. yeah, man. And then if you don't feel it after like the second one, then throw it even further. Keep chasing kind of like that sting. That's how you know you're throwing those muscles out. This is gonna make you fast, very fast. Can't be- already fast. Well, then we'll make you faster. Well, you'll blaze past UTR9 then. All right, last thing we're gonna do is high knees, okay? Um, this also helps with agility. Here we go, three, two, one, go. As high as you can. And focus on the height rather than the forward distance. Good, back. Very nice. All right, now next let's do some uh, coordination drills, all right? All right, so the first coordination drill we're gonna do to help you with your moment of impact and coordination when you're hitting your shots is I'm just gonna toss the ball away from you. First thing I want you to do is split step into a wide open stance. Go ahead. Very good. And I'm gonna toss you two to your forehand side and two to your backhand side. To your forehand side, what I wanna see is to see you gallop to the ball. If you only need to do one, two gallops, doesn't matter. And that's also the other important thing about this drill too, is that it helps you calibrate how much you need to move to the ball, okay? So again, I'm gonna give you two forehands, two backhands. Let's say I toss the ball over here, you're gonna catch it with your right hand. So you're gonna do one gallop. If it's close enough for one, catch it. Or if it's a little bit further, one, two. Catch it, go back to the middle. When you go back to the middle, when you recover, make sure you gallop. And then on the backhand side, it's identical, okay? This is gonna help with your open stance backhands as well. A lot of players, they don't have an open stance backhand, but if you develop yours, the thing is about when you're moving towards the ball, you don't choose where the ball is coming, right? And the thing is, since open stance is our default stance, an odd number of steps will put us in the closed stance and an even number of steps will put us into open stance. If I take two steps, I'm back into open stance. If I take three steps, I'm in closed stance, okay? I hit with a one-handed backhand. How often do I hit with an open stance? If you're forced to. If the ball's coming straight to you, and sometimes you might even have to slide back into a half open stance and take it, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Split step into a wide open stance. All the footwork is gonna be galloping to approach and recovery can be either 
uh, galloping as well, or the first movement can be a karaoke, okay? On the fall, let it bounce first. Three, two, one, go. Very nice, and toss it back. One more, go. Very good. Backhand side, now you're gonna be catching with this left hand. Three, two, one, go. Very nice. Again, back to the middle. Split step wide, as wide as you can get, good. Now back to the forehand side, go. Very nice, again. Backhand side, go. Nice, last one. Very good. You made easy work of that, man. All right, let's go ahead and get started hitting some actual balls. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at those ground strokes, all right? There's five game situations in tennis. Baseline to baseline, serve, volley, player approaching the net, and opponent approaching the net. But this practice, I wanna focus on baseline to baseline because a lot of your points are actually really going to start and finish from the baseline, okay? Here we go. Split step into a wide open stance. We're gonna focus on that forehand, okay? Okay. All right, keep going. Just taking a look at it right now, seeing how you hit the forehand and how you move. That's another thing too. Higher level tennis, especially if you're trying to play or get to UTR nine and beyond, you're gonna be forced to hit a lot of shots on the rise. There's three ball timings in the air, which is what you hit when you're volleying, on the rise, which is right after the ball bounces, and on the fall, which is after the ball bounces and reaches its apex, like that last ball. And these, let's go to backhands now, and I'm gonna keep explaining. Ready? Ball timing is important, because the sooner out of those three distinct phases that you take the ball, the less energy the ball has. Beginners, you always wanna start on the fall. On the rise, it's gonna have a little bit more energy. And in the air, that's when it has the most energy, okay? So again, one of the biggest differences between lower and higher level tennis is training, developing, and learning how to take balls on the rise way more. Some of the best college players, almost every single shot is on the rise. Okay, now I'm gonna give, uh, start giving you some more on the rise backhands. Are you ready? Split step wide. Good. Very nice. Nice. That's all right. That was a tough one. Nice chip. Very good. I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm gonna put the power up a little bit more. See how you deal with those. Okay, back to the forehand side. All of these are gonna be on the rise, okay? You ready? Nice. Backhand side, and again, you don't have to hit everything topspin. You can slice or use topspin, whatever you want, as long as it's, uh, as long as it's a ground stroke, okay? Wide open stance, split step, very good. Very nice. It's all right. Nice slice. I was like an open stance there. Yeah, you saw what I was talking about? My bad. Let me see two more. And last one. Oh, you almost made in the basket. Last one. Very nice. All right, so the beautiful thing about proper tennis technique is that it's completely optimized. Now, what do I mean by that? Perfect tennis technique is the least injury prone, the most energy efficient, and the most powerful. So not only when you're using proper technique, not only are you less likely to hurt yourself, but you're going to be able to hit the ball harder while putting in less energy. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so we're gonna isolate that forehand side. I'm already see, I was already seeing some things when I was feeding balls to you, but again, I'm gonna toss some balls to you right here, and we're gonna focus on one thing at a time, okay? Are you ready? Split step into a wide open stance, good. All right, and just hit forehands, straight ahead. Straight ahead. Okay. Two more. Last one. So every single stroke involves the swing, which is the upper body, and then the footwork, which is the lower body. So literally as a coach, if I'm looking at one, I have no idea what's going on with the other one. So if you ask me what's wrong with my swing, but I'm looking at your feet, I'd have no idea because I'm looking at your feet. The opposite is also true. If you ask me what's wrong with your footwork, but I'm looking at your swing, I have no idea, okay? Because I can only focus on one thing at a time. But luckily I was looking at both. I always, with most of my students, I usually start with the footwork because that's the easiest one to fix, okay? So the number one thing, that I'm gonna have you do now, and I tell almost all of my players this, like 99% of players, again, what did I say about perfect technique earlier? Is that it's optimized all across the board. It's the least injury prone, the most energy efficient, and you can hit it the hardest. So the question is, how, what can we change about our technique that lets us hit the ball harder and still keep it in, okay? The first thing is a wide open stance. So for a lot of the balls that I fed to you, you're going into a closed stance or a half open stance. What I wanna see you do instead is just stay in a wide open stance, okay? Stepping into the ball, what does that achieve? That achieves shifting weight into the ball, but we can still achieve that purpose through a different means, which is staying in a wide open stance and shifting weight from our right to our left. As long as we can manage to shift weight into the ball, we're going to get power, okay? And so also, don't underestimate the fact that you can just allow the ball to come to you. And then finally, the lower that you, that you take the ball, the more spin that you can apply to it, okay? So I'm gonna toss a couple more balls. The one change that I wanna see you do is, instead of going to the ball into a closed stance and stepping into it, I wanna see you just hang out in this wide open stance, and then from here, kill it, okay? This is how I hit all my winners. I just stay in a wide open stance, okay? If you can do this, if the ball's not too short where you have to approach it, or it's not too deep where you have to back up, if you can afford to sit in a wide open stance, then do it. Not only are you getting lower and you can get underneath the ball more, but you're wider and when you throw your weight, you're more stable. This is the secret to hitting hard, hitting winners from the baseline and keeping it in. This is what's gonna take you to the next level, is having a more offensive, neutral game. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Split step into a wide open stance. That's the purpose of the split step, by the way, is to get in a wide open stance, okay? Here we go. So I'm still gonna toss it, wide open stance on everything. There we go. Wide open stance. Yes, perfect. The more stable you are, the, the more harder you can hit the ball. Excellent. Does it actually feel different than what you were doing before? Don't know. Okay, fair enough. That felt, it feels different. Okay. And here's the important thing to understand. When you're in a wide open stance, you're going to have some tension in your quads and your heels are going to be up. So it's, it really is almost like you are holding a light squat. The reason that a lot of players don't do this is because this, is, this will tire you out over time. This is an energy investment. But when you invest that energy up front, you're allowed to spend even more after that. Does that make sense? So if I invest the slight muscle enduring energy to maintain this light squat, I will be able to use more of my power and keep the ball in. A lot of players that I see, they try and hit the ball hard, but they don't do anything with their lower body. It's so easy to throw your weight off and either overturn or underturn your upper body when your lower body isn't wide. This one small thing will change your entire game. If you can meet the ball in a wide open stance, do it and you can hit the ball hard and hard anywhere. Sounds good? Okay, let's do five, seven more. Seven's a lucky number. Ready? Split step wide. There we go. As wide as you can get while staying balanced and mobile. Are you aiming for me, man? <laughs> I've been trying to put the ball in play. <laughs> How many was that? Close stance. Better stop. Uh, that was number four, I believe. Good. Last two. 
And last one. I feel like I, I stay low and hit through it. Very nice, very nice. But the ball is bouncing lower. All right, now the second thing that we're going to do to your game has to do with the upper body. So we've got the wide open stance down on the oh, forehand. You don't need that. You don't need what? Plenty upper body. <laughs> hey, this guy's funny. All right, but the thing that we're going to do with your swing is you have a tendency to take your racket back with a bent elbow, and then if you if you manage to meet the ball with a straight arm at the moment of impact, good. But if you keep your arm out straight. That's going to help you better calibrate whether or not you're too close or too far from the ball. A lot of people believe that if they hit the ball too hard, that's why shots go out. But in reality, you actually need to hit the ball harder to supply more spin, especially if you're, get, uh, if you're playing against another hard hitter. Okay? So for example, if I try and hit hard with this bent elbow, it's going to go out. Okay? But if I use my entire arm, it actually goes in. And a lot of players, they don't have that level of trust or faith in their power. The they, they don't have arms like this. <laughs> okay. All right, ex-football player. But we're kind of taught not to believe in our power. The problem isn't using less power. The problem is learning how to control as much power as we can. Does that make sense? So the first thing we did was add a wide open sense. That gives us more access to our power. Now the second thing we can do because of that is use our entire arm. And to help calibrate us starting to use more arm, right when you go into racket back, stick your arm out, okay? Again, it's not the worst habit in the world to uh, take your racket back with your elbow bent. Watching the doll. The yeah. Doll does this. Yeah, a lot of players do it. But you have to make sure that when you meet that ball at the moment of impact, because the doll's arm is straight at the moment of impact as well, you have to make sure that that happens, okay? Let's try it, all right? Split step, wide open stance, and stick that arm out. Yes. Very nice. Stay as wide as you can, stick it out. Wide open stance. That lower body is as equally as important as that upper body. Open stance, open stance. Good. Yes. Our instinct is to get to the ball as soon as possible. We underestimate how much time we have and how long we can wait for the ball to come to us. Does that make sense? So literally, again, we feel as though we need to get the ball as soon as possible. That's not actually true. We need to at least, at best I should say, be in a position where we can hit our best shot, okay? If I get a ball like this, I can end the point immediately. See how long I waited? But I don't have to get to the ball as soon as possible. I can't really do something that good, I hit a high quality shot if I just rush. Okay? So again, the focus of this is just let the ball come to you and trust that you're going to be able to hit a good shot. Okay? Wide. There we go. Instead of getting closer, get lower. Yeah, see how you wanted to move forward on that one? Split step wide. Instead of get closer, get lower. Yes! Beautiful. Instead of getting closer, get lower. There we go. See how low you can take that one? Here we go. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Alright, bro. <laughs> Don't worry, I can dodge. Alright, here we go. Last three. Three more. Excellent. You felt the spin on that one? You felt like you were able to just rip from underneath? I got low. Yeah. Last two, again. That's all right. Last one. Oh my God. All right. Forehand looks pretty good. Um, yeah, let's move on to the backhand. All right, same process that we went through with the forehand. I'm gonna hand feed you a couple backhands, analyze it a little bit closer, and see if we can improve anything. You ready? Here we go. Split step wide. Okay. Looks quite nice. Let me give you some high ones. I want to see how you hit the high ones. So instead of backing up, just take it high. I want to see how you hit those high back and winners, okay? Split step wide, yep. Just take it high. Okay. What do you feel like you have trouble with on the backhand side? Do you feel like... Well, I, 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 I have to back up. There's no, there's no way. 
because I'm so big, I can't hit a ball. For some reason, I can't hit a ball here. Uh, my zone is right here every time. You feel you feel like you feel like you can't hit them high. Well, I mean that's as you watch videos, you see one hand is that, that's their that's their crutch, right? Can't get balls up here. Can't, can't win. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll give you four more high ones, and then I'll show you how to handle them. But your low ones you're comfortable with, and I, I, and from my perspective, the low backhands look pretty good. You like them? Oh, I love them. Yeah. All right, I'll give you four high ones. Don't back up. Try and take it high. Same thing. Don't back up. Just take it where it is. And kind of spoiler alert, you're already doing what you're yeah, supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was on the rise too. I like that one too. Yeah, that's also very important too to recognize. Do I take it high? Do I step in and take it on the rise? Or do I back up? Yeah, that's, those are all very important um, discernments to make. Okay. All right. It's very, very simple. And once I explain it to you, it's... You watch tennis on TV, right? So have you seen Federer hit backhands? Oh, I love Federer's backhand. I like uh, Dominic Thiem's backhand. All right. Yes. Okay. All right, so for these high backhands, here's the secret, okay? The higher you take the ball, the further away from you, you have to extend your arm. So depending on the height of the ball, your moment of impact is actually going to change. When you take the ball low, it's going to be close to you right here. And this actually does, this doesn't even just apply to the one hand backhand, this applies to both the two hand and the one hand backhand, okay? So I'm, a, I'm primarily a two handed backhand player. When I hit my two handed backhands and they're low, all the way down here, so low and close. If it's higher, and you, we've played against each other a couple times, right? So you know how I hit my high backhands. I stick my arms out all the way out here. Make sense? So whenever, and, and hitting high backhands in general is one of the hardest things for players. Like most players are able to learn how to take advantage of forehand winners pretty easily, okay? But when it comes to these... Point two. Balls in your pocket. <laughs> All right, whatever. For, for these high ones, players have a tendency to get too close and hit it out, okay? Oh my God. So, the challenge when it comes to high backhands is that distancing, okay, and getting away from it. Because if you get away from it, the proper distance points yours, okay? I don't have the most beautiful one-hand backhand in the world, but you're getting what I'm saying, right? Yes, yes, I understand. You need the further away. Further away from really the, to the side as well, to the side as well. Right, if you... Here. Okay. Yeah. If you reach in front of you, that's still too close to you. But you want to reach out here and go straight through it out here. Okay. Low ones, they can be close to you. They can be in front. High always has to be out here. Go straight through it. Okay. And the last thing that you'll probably notice is that whenever you take the ball low, you can afford to lock your wrist. The lower the ball is, the more your wrist is locked because when you're getting underneath the ball, you're applying more spin. Okay. So low, keep the wrist locked. Okay. My racket's facing the right. When you say locked, what do you mean locked? I'm not bending, twisting, right, right. opening and closing, or waving, okay? Right. For the high ones, yeah, I what I saw you, this. yeah. Yes. What I saw you do earlier, when I tossed those high ones to you, you would close your wrist, right? You're getting behind the ball, you're not getting underneath it, so we need to still apply spin. We close our wrist in order to do that, okay? So two things, literally just two things, in order to handle these high backhands is further away from you, go straight through it. Further away from you, straight through it, never in front of you, always beside you, and then close your wrist more. Contact point. Like yeah, it's, it's over here. here. Versus. Yes, here. Don't, do not hit it in front. So it's level with the knee, up high. Sure. Just make sure it's out here. This is something to practice, okay? Right. Letting it pass you. Here? Yes. Okay. The higher it is, the further out. The, the lower it is, the closer and lower it is, okay? And in front of me, okay. And last thing, it's better to be too far than too close. Too close, you're done. All right, here we go. High ones again. Instead of backing up, take it high. Away. Oh, my God. Far and close. There we go. Yes, because... People don't believe in the power. Excellent. Further away from you, straight to your side. Very good. Those are the kind of mistakes I want you to see, I want to see you hit. 
before you can start even getting these shots in, you have to be comfortable with hitting them. But a lot, and that's, that's everything. You need to be comfortable before you start succeeding at something. But the problem is a lot of players are uncomfortable with investing more power. What happens is that they miss a winner and then they get criticized and then they get discouraged and then they become so fearful that the only thing they start doing is playing ultra safe. They'll start taking off power on the returns and over risking them, trying to stay in the point too much, not investing a lot of energy, not playing confidently. It's better for you. Oh! You gave me a buzz cut, bro. Not gonna lie. Does this actually feel better though? Feel different, feel better? No, 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 no. It feels, it feels good. Okay, awesome. Now I'm hitting from here now. There we go. Arm extended. Yes. Straight arm, right? Straight arm. Three more. It's actually better to lose with confidence than it is to win with trepidation. Because when you win when you're afraid, you just reinforce the fact that you have to play super careful all the time. That's on you, bro. <laughs> And that's not and playing super careful is not going to cut it against very good, hard hitting, long lasting players that have full confidence that play four sets to warm up. Oh my god. Done, I'm done. <laughs> All right, excellent, man. <laughs> excellent. All right. So, now that we've looked at that forehand and backhand, let's go ahead and go back to the drill we we're doing earlier. And let's try and see if we can implement those changes, okay? Split step wide open stance. Let's do those four hands first. I'm going to hit them all deep, okay? Obviously, don't hit this one. I'm just going to feed it. If it's short like that, yeah, you're going to go closed stance. Closed stance is a stance of approaching. But if you look at pro rally videos, literally just look up any tournament, let's say Australian Open 29 Pro ATP warm up. They're all just staying in open stance every single opportunity. Even the volleys, many instructors will tell you step in, punch the ball, step in, punch the ball. But you're one video away, one YouTube result search away of finding a video of Federer using open stance for the first 15 volleys, okay? So open stance is the default stance that we use in ready position, and it's the stance that you wanna stay in, hit the ball wide, straight arm, if you don't have to move, ready? Open stance, again, there we go. Open stance, there we go, good. It takes some getting used to. Many people, yes, many people are used to closing into the ball. Again, what did I say about tennis technique that makes it so convenient is that it's completely optimized. It's the most efficient, most energy productive, and the least injury prone. Nice whip forehand. Straighter arm on racket back. Stick the wing straight out. This will calibrate your distance from the ball. Split step wide. Stick the wing straight out. Yes, yes, that calibrates you. Your stance calibrates your footwork. Your straight arm racket back calibrates you from your moment of impact. Does that make sense? Here we go. Oh my God, instantly when I saw that beautiful, the spreading the entire body. That's fine, that ball was short. Yeah, if it's short, you close. If it's deep like that, everything's wide. Split step wide, full wingspan, beautiful. Split step wide, full wingspan, beautiful. All right, let's look at those backhands. And again, the discernment that we made was between the low and the high. The low ones, we keep the wrist locked and we just go straight through it. You can hit that one beside you or in front of you um, and then you just keep the wrist locked. These high ones, you always have to meet those out. And then you close through it. Invest the power, go straight through it. Same thing I said on the forehand side, dominate the ball. Same thing with these high backhands, dominate the ball. Playing with confidence and losing is better than winning with trepidation. We're gonna start with the low ones and then we'll go to the high ones. Very nice. And again, you can slice them as well, the one hand backhand is very moment of impact sensitive. Slices have a closer moment of impact than um, topspin ground strokes. And another thing, the topspin backhand has the worst moment of impact range, but the slice backhand has the best moment of impact range. Isn't that crazy? It's kind of like there's like a natural order to every single stroke in tennis. <laughs> nice. The important thing about the slice is that you send it back deep. 
the, what's, what's going on is an effective shot is a shot that's either too close or too far from the player and it forces them to hit it on the rise, okay? Speed is correlated, a fast shot is correlated with being able to do that, but correlation and causation are two completely different things. So you can still hit, I'm gonna slice a backhand here as a demonstration, even though your slice is slow. In fact, the fact that it's slow actually buys you time. And again, the reason that an effective shot is an effective, the reason that an effective shot, I'm gonna feed as I talk, the reason that an effective shot is something that's very um, close or far and something that forces the opponent to hit it on the rise is because it disrupts their moment of impact. Okay, so here you're cutting it short a little bit. So that's the opposite of going straight through it. All right, I'm gonna start feeding you those high backhands as I was talking about earlier, those low backhands are fine. Now it's deliberately gonna be high and I'm gonna back up a little bit. Ready? Again, focus on taking it out to the side. Do not take it in front. That's too close and it'll go out. It's better to be too far than too close. Ready? End it. Nice. If it comes above shoulder height, then yeah, that's a little bit tough. Nice. Timing a very vertical on the rise ball is pretty tough. Good. Perfect. Get there a little bit faster. Even with a perfect stroke, if you're not there in time, it doesn't matter. Slightly close on that one. Okay. Get away from it. Excellent. Harder. Even harder. Nice. Nice. Now I'm going to give you some approach shots. So I'm going to feed it high but shorter. So move in, close your stance, swing through it, and then open up again, okay? Because I know this is the shot you want to get down. You want to be able to end points with this one, right? Here we go. Up there. Yeah. So distancing from this one, we want to get far from the ball, not too close. That's easy. Yes. One more, that one was a little bit too close. Stick that arm out there. Oh yeah, good, I like it. All right, now that we've fed those forehands and backhands, let's work on a consistent rally for each of them. We're gonna do forehands back and forth, okay? So just forehands, if it goes cross court a little bit, sure. We're trying to keep everything to each other, all right? All right. Very nice. Go through it. Yeah, dominate. Ah. 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 Nice. Ah. That's all right. For inside, remember straight wing out. Hey, 
Like I said earlier, the measure of your level as a tennis player is just three things. How well can you stay in the point, end the point, and save the point, okay? So you've gotten to the level where you're really good at staying in the point, but in order to get to the next level, you have to be really good at ending these points, okay? So we're gonna play a game called 11, all right? We've done this before, um, where I'll feed the ball, and the point starts uh, just immediately, okay? So you only score if you hit a winner. Literally, you can hit a winner right off the feed if you want to, okay? If I make a mistake or if you make an unforced error, neither of us make a point. We only make points. Back here and hit. Try to hit winners all day. All, well, the first shot is going straight to you, yeah. This, the, the purpose of this is to build confidence in attacking because we're removing a penalty for missing shots. Make sense? Okay, here we go. Love all, and I'll feed everything. So literally, the ball is in your court. Here we go. Nope, second. Nice, love one. It was, it was a good forced error, you feel me? So if you force me to slice and I miss it, I'll give you a point, okay? Yes. Good, 2-0. What'd I tell you? Ah. Nope, no points. Line's good. That's not the line! <laughs> you are! Second. Love two. Very nice. Love three. Ah! Ah! Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! Here we go! Winner! 2 6. I'm only gonna feed you backhands now because of that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, 2 9. Wait, 2 8. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two nine. <laughs> oh. Ah. No. Oh. Oh. I'll give it to you. Two ten. <laughs> Only high vacuums because of that. Second. Oh, I'm gassed. Uh, easy one. Oh, oh, oh. Well, there you go. I think you're good. I think you're in good shape for the next tournament, man. There it is. There it is. My boy Matt, good hitting today. Yeah, and uh, that backhand out here up high. That's right. What were we say about that forehand? That's forehand, beautiful. Feels right. Good. Man, he, he destroyed me. Oh there my God. Is. All right. Well, that's a wrap, man. I'll see you next week. All right.